Hey, let's have a word of prayer for the few minutes we have left for Sunday school, and then we'll get uh, started uh, again at, at, for the church hour. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for your goodness to us, Lord, for your kindness to us, Lord, in Lord, the day in which we live, in the fact that, Lord, even though there's nobody here, we can still be, Lord, speaking to people. Lord, we pray for our... Uh, I guess we could pray for the world, but Lord, more than that, we pray for us, Lord, who are here. Or we, we pray, Lord, and I know that there are many who are praying, Lord, that you would remove this scourge from our land. Lord, we have absolutely no doubt that you could do that. Lord, I'm reminded that when David sinned and numbered the people and Joab had warned him not to do that, that, Lord, you sent a pestilence to the land in which thousands upon thousands of people died. And then after three days, you stopped it. Lord, I, I have no doubt that you could stop this plague. Lord, that is upon us, Lord, today. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. Lord, we, we don't want anybody to be sick. We don't want anybody to die. Lord, the unfortunate truth is that tens of thousands of babies will be butchered. Hundreds of thousands of babies will be butchered this week and nobody bats an eye. And yet we're upset because three to 4,000 people, and Lord, we are upset about that. Lord, we pray that you would hear us Lord, I'm reminded of that verse, that a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Lord, that no plague shall come near nigh our dwelling. So, Lord, we claim these verses today. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow of his wings of the Most High. And, Lord, we pray that would be so about us. Now, Lord, bless, we pray. Lord, we only have a couple minutes left, really, for Sunday school, but help us, Lord, to get something, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus had been in the wilderness. After the healing of Lazarus, Jesus had gone away and into the wilderness, and, and he has now gone a, a, a kind of a straight line across Israel to Jericho. And as he leaves Jericho, he heals a blind man. As he enters into Jericho, he comes across, in chapter 19 of Luke, he comes across the man by the name of Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus was of little stature, and so he climbed up in the sycamore tree because he wanted to see the Lord. He heard the Lord was coming, just as in uh, Mark chapter, I think it's 9 or 11. It's got to be about 11 or, 11 or 12. Jesus is leaving Jericho, and Bartimaeus he, hears this disturbance, and he says, who is that? And somebody said, well, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And Bartimaeus cries out, and they told him to shut up, and he wouldn't shut up, and Jesus stopped, and but what is it you want? But entering into Jericho, he meets Zacchaeus, and as, you know, he says, come down, and the Bible said, Jesus said that, uh, come down, for I must abide at thy house today. And in verse 9 of chapter 19, Jesus said, this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he is also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus came to save people. And then in the next verse, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem, because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Now, Jesus meets Zacchaeus. Jesus then leaves Jericho. And upon leaving Jericho, Matthew says he met two men, two blind men. Mark says there was one. You say, well, well, there's a contradiction in the Scriptures, preacher. Well, not really. Mark just says there was Bartimaeus. It doesn't say there weren't two blind men. It just particularly mentions uh, Bartimaeus. Now, he meets Bartimaeus and he heals him. And Bartimaeus, the Bible says, immediately follows Jesus in the way. 
after leaving Jericho, they come nigh, Jericho is not that far, they come nigh to Jerusalem. And it says that they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Now, in chapter 19, after that, after Jesus speaks his parable to them, it says in verse 28, when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's kind of sets up on a hill. Story of the parable of the, um, oh, I can't think of that now. I know I'm looking at it. I know right where it is. The story of the guy, you remember the guy that got beaten up and he got left by the wayside and, and the Bible says there came down. You know, people say, well, maybe the priest was in a hurry to get it. No, he wasn't. He was coming down out of, of Jerusalem. Jerusalem sets up on a hill. And so Jesus ascend, was ascending up. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, and the which at you entering in you shall find a colt tied, wherein ye ever, never man sat, loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they went, and they that were sent went their way, and found as it had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jerusalem. And they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Then in the Gospel of John, in chapter 12, the John has 21 chapters beginning in about chapter 11, uh, the last half of the book, is taken up really with what I would consider probably about the last two or three weeks of the life of Jesus. In chapter 11, we find the greatest miracle that Jesus ever did in the presence of the Jews. That was the raising of Lazarus from the dead. In chapter 12, we read this. On the next day, what day is that? Well, there is a feast in chapter 12. Uh, the, where Jesus and Lazarus and Mary and Martha and a whole bunch of people are there. And the next day after that, which leads me to believe that chapter 11, while sequential in John, couldn't have been many days before chapter 12. On the next day in John 12, 12, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees, that's our palm background today, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, cried, Hosanna, blessed is he, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, the, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered they, that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he had called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they had heard that he had done 
this miracle. Now, Jesus enters in Jerusalem. It is important in chapter uh, 19 of Luke that we read today. It's important there that they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately come. Uh, my good friend Rudy Holland uh, said this about the triumphal entry. So it's not original to me. I got it from him that, that Jesus showed up. Now, he did not show up for the reason that they thought. They thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. They thought that Jesus was going to free them from Roman bondage and that Israel would once again become an independent, self-sufficient nation. That's what they thought. Jesus showed up, but he did not show up for the reason that they thought he showed up. And that's so true in our lives. You know, so many people say, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, but man, I'm living my life. And, I'm, and, and they think that Jesus shows up in their life for what they think he should show up for. Jesus showed up in Jerusalem that day. The, we call it Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry, when he entered into Jerusalem. And the people thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear, but it didn't. Jesus showed up but not for the reason that they thought he showed up. And that's so true in our life. That's true in my life. I have to tell you this, that I never would have imagined when I graduated from high school, my senior year of high school, if you'd have said to me, do you know where Greg New York, I didn't even know there was a Greg New York. I had no idea that I would be here. Now, I met Christ, found Christ, got saved, entered the door, took a drink of water, took a bite of bread, uh, went out and found Green Pastures uh, a little before I was 16 years old. My life, my life was planned. I know a lot of 16-year-olds have no idea what they're going to do, but I had a good idea what I was going to do. I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to be a farmer. You say, are you serious, preacher? Well, I'm not a dairy farmer. Uh, where I lived in Maryland, there were lots of dairy farms, and there weren't a lot of beef farms, but there were a lot of dairy farms. And I had figured out pretty early I wasn't going to be a dairy farmer. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. I didn't. I, you know what? Those cows got to be milked every day. You don't get a day off. They got to be milked every day. Unless you hire some people to help you, you got to milk those cows every day. When we were in like the 11th grade, we, I was in the FFA ag class back then, a little bit different, and we went to a beef farm. Uh, and this guy had a silo, and he pushed the button, and the, a conveyor belt started around, and the, uh, the silage came out on the conveyor belt. You didn't have to load it. You didn't have to feed it. Uh, and I thought, man, that's the kind of job that I'd like. Just push a button and the cows, the beefers get fed. I had already talked to my high school teacher about how to get started. I wasn't going to live in Maryland. I had an, a, a dream of, man, I was going to have a beef farm out west somewhere. And, and that's, that's what I was going to do. I had no intention of, of being a preacher. Now, I didn't mind speaking in front of people. You know, most people would rather go to a funeral. It's, it's true. Most people would rather go to a funeral than have to stand up in front of people and speak. I never had that problem, but I had no intention of being a preacher. Uh, that, that is not what I wanted to do. I was, I was not, not going to do that. Uh, and then Jesus showed up. See, Jesus showed up in Jerusalem, but not for what the people thought. They thought he had come to bring the kingdom of God in immediately. But that's not really why he came. The Pharisees said, you need to tell these people to shut up. Jesus said, I'm telling you something, pal, that if I forbid these people to speak, the rocks themselves will cry out. Now, that would have been a quite a scene. But Jesus showed up 
but not for what they thought. Jesus showed up in my life, but not for the reason that I thought. We often think we have a plan and our lives are planned out. We have a future. We're, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Honestly, I, again, as I said a few minutes ago, if you'd have said to me, you're going to, you're going to be a preacher in Greg, New York, I would have laughed. I said, hey, that's not what I'm going to do with my life. I, I don't want to do that. I have no desire to do that. I want to be a farmer. I want to be a beef farmer. I want to have a big farm with a lot of beefers uh, out west somewhere. I'm going to have a ranch, and I'm going to have horses and beefers. That's, that's what I'm going to do. But then Jesus showed up. They would have made him king. They would have made him king that day. But that's not why that's not why he showed up. Jesus came to bear the sins of many. And listen, dear friend, if you're if you're saved today, if you're on your way to heaven, you know Jesus is Savior and Christ is your king and, and you know all these things. If you know that, listen, Jesus showed up in your life for a reason. Jesus came for a reason. I'd, I'd, I'd never, ever, 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 ever in my wildest imaginations would have dreamed that I would have been here. My life has been a dream to the point where I, I look at my life sometimes and I, I think like Tommy Lasorda, when Lasorda was uh, that the coach for the Los Angeles Dodgers was uh, elected into the Hall of Fame, he said this, and I've, I've used it many times, he said, my life has been such a dream that at any moment, he said, I believe that I will feel my mother putting her hand on my shoulder, waking me up, saying, Tommy, wake up. It's time to go to school. My life has been that. My life has been that. God showed up in my life. Jesus showed up in Jerusalem, not for the reason that they thought. Jesus showed up in my life, not for the reason that I thought. Oh, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came. But he came, really, into my life and gave my life a purpose, a whole different purpose and a meaning that I never really would have had. We often say, Mo, it's my life and I'll do what I want. Not if you're saved. The Bible says this, for you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Look, we are not our own. I'm not own. Jesus showed up in my life for not the reason that I thought. Jesus came for not the reason that I thought. Jesus showed up, but not the reason I thought why. Jesus showed up that day on, on the triumphal entry. We call Palm Sunday when he, he came in. They put clothes in the way. They put palms in the way. Blessed is he. And they would have made him king. They would have. There were other instances where they would have taken Jesus and would have made him king, but that's not why he came. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's me. That's why he came. Jesus showed up in your life for a reason, friend. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Father, we thank you again for this day. And Lord, we just had a brief time, really, just kind of a devotional, Lord, for Sunday school today. But Lord, here we are, and we pray that, Lord, you'd bless us and help us. Lord, bless the next hour, we pray. Lord, it's unusual times, and Lord, we're, Lord, we pray for wisdom. You said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally. So, Lord, we ask for wisdom to know what to do here at our church. Lord, we've not been saved unto a spirit of fear. Lord, we've not been saved unto a spirit of fear, but a, a, but a power and of might and of a sound mind. Lord, help us to make sound decisions. Bless us, we pray, and help us now, we ask. Lord, uh, the rest of our morning, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.